And Levac is smiling from ear to ear. I'll let you take over. Just do it. Well, the Redskins thought they had it made back in 84. And the only thing they had was a butt whooping coming from you <laughs> and your squad, the L.A. Raiders. Mike Haynes joins us, cornerback. Uh, we, Patriots too, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> the Raiders, uh, the ring, is is that the ring? That's, that's the your, Hall of Fame ring. That's your Hall of Fame ring. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, lifelong Raiders fan. 80 was the, the year that I, I fell in love with the team. 84 was the, was the year that I went, I picked the right team. Yeah. So, so I, I, I don't want to gush over you all day long, but – Hall of Fame, Super Bowl cornerback, Rookie of the Year too, right? Which, yeah. I mean, Mike Haynes. Thank you, thank you. It is a what pleasure an to meet you. Well, he he deserves he, it. Mike, we are talking over seventy-five people on Radio Row. He's been talking about you for a week and a half, man. <laughs> well, he goes, he comes to me, he goes, "You want to talk to Mike Haynes?" I'm like, "Do I have to hit you? <laughs> you have to ask me that question." <laughs> Mike, good to see you, man. You wear that jacket all the time? Uh, no, I oh, don't okay. wear it all the time, oh, but okay. I wear it at Super Bowl all the time. Okay, that's good. Super Bowl, Hall of Fame. Uh, and some at Raider events, we'll all wear them. Um, so, yeah, NFL events, sometimes I'll wear it. It's, it's great when you see these jackets walking around town or at, at big events. Yeah. Uh, in the old days, the jackets were more oh, yellow, and guys right. really didn't want to wear it. Because it was like, you know? a, uh, like a mustard. Yeah, you like remember it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is more acceptable, and guys are willing to wear it more often. Well, well, let's be honest, too. You're probably one of the only guys who still fits in your jacket. <laughs> you know, a lot of the guys get away from the game, and they end up being built like me, not like you. Well, Hager, actually, they're the makers of the jacket. They actually come out to the Hall of Fame every year. Yeah. And so if the guy comes every year, he can get a new jacket if he needs one. Really? Oh, yeah, just get refitted. Absolutely. If I'm you, I just keep every year just get another one. Just, I'd, have a, I'd have a closet full of them. I have two. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Um, all right, so... As you're walking around Radio Row, you're you're you know you're meeting everybody. What players remind you of that that old Raiders team with that mystique that that you didn't really want to get on the field with you guys? Uh, <laughs> around here was well, the guys are not so far. I don't think there's anybody here like that meets that description. You remember Bob Golick? Yeah, absolutely. I just ran. I just ran to Bob. Yeah, Levac was uh, like hugging Bob earlier. It, oh, really is that right? Yeah. I think I'm the only Radio Nation guy here because somebody came over. Like, oh, you gotta come see Bob. Yeah. Like, People were acting like he's a leprechaun, like they've never seen him before. Like, <laughs> uniform. Like, oh my gosh, you're the Raiders guy. Come over here. Yeah. I'm. I'm, I'm still waving the flag for you, man. Yeah. But well, like, you know, it's a. Uh, it, it's um. You know, I come every year, so every year it's a different challenge. Every year, different guys come. And I think it depends on where the city is. And so here is more like West Coast guys. And so West Coast guys are a little bit more laid back. Yeah. They're going to fly in here on Thursday. <laughs> Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Former NFL cornerback uh, Mike Haynes joining us. 104.5, the team. You're home for New York sports. Hashtag Armin Levac, SB49. Mike, as you look like, as you look at the wide receivers in today's game and, and, and comparing them to, to those in the past, it, is it the the athleticism, the natural athleticism that, that jumps out to you about today's wide receiver? Are you trying to say that today's wide receiver is better than the old wide receivers? It's different, though, isn't it? I'm not trying to say better. Is it different? Uh, how is it different? Um... We have – why are you – wait, I'm supposed to be asking you. Well, no, uh, I, 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 you know, dig, you I'll asked – let him dig himself yeah, in. Here's how I look at it. <laughs> here, here's, like, what, what, uh, what guys tell me. The kids these days, at a younger age, there's the science of the training and the specifics so that by the time they get to the league, that athleticism is more fully blossomed at 18 years old than it was when you played. Is that not accurate? That I, I, don't, I don't know that I agree with that. Okay. You know, I don't know I agree with it. I'd say the thing that is different is the conditioning. Okay. All right, that's the major difference. I think guys still catch the ball, you know, the same as they did before. They made great catches before. They made great catches now. There are guys that, you know, there's equipment that you can use and you can train better. And so I think guys, if I had to say there was one major difference, I'd say that it's conditioning. Uh, there was a fear that guys could burn out. And so guys would work out and they'd, they'd be afraid of burnout today. They're not afraid of burnout. They, they know they need to keep, have enough fluid in their body. Um, they're drinking differently. They take more supplements and different things like that. So the training is probably the biggest difference. And then when you have the, uh, like the West Coast offense, the no huddle stuff, and you, you don't get a chance to recover. So you got to be in super, super good shape to, uh, to play the game today. That's a major difference. But in terms of uh, are, the ath are the guys better athletes today, I'd say they're better conditioned than they were before. That's that's the main difference. As a corner, though, do you, you look at the new rules and go, it, it, I mean, how do you shut guys down when you can't even put a hand on them? The, the rules are the same, too. So the only difference is they call it more consistent. Okay. You know, um, and uh, when they when they implement these rules, I was I think I was, why do I feel like I was on the Raiders when they implemented those rules? 
So, um, but I know that I was in my like second or third year. Maybe it was, maybe that's the time when the the league came around. Oh, maybe it was because I knew I was gonna be playing it more. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have a better understanding of the rules. But uh, I would not let those officials out of the room when they were trying to tell us how they were gonna call the five yard bump rule. And I said, so you're telling me if the guy comes off the line, if I go up and catch him at like three yards, and he's making contact with me, and he's really the one pushing me back, if we're still in contact at six, seven yards, you're going to call a flag? Go, oh, no, we're not going to call a flag on that. Oh, okay. So I, now I know. All right, so I can do that. I can go up there, and I can just get in his way, and you're not going to call it. Okay. All right, so, so, so if I run up the sideline and we're bumping, and it's just you know like incidental contact, you're not going to call that, or you are going to call it? Oh, no, if it's incidental. Um, and what about when the ball's in there? As long as you're looking for the ball. Uh, okay, so I had to learn all these different things, and I don't think – I know that other defensive backs did not do that. I mean, even the Raider players were saying, Mike, come on, man, we out of here. If, you know, if you stop asking questions, the meeting is over, man. Yeah. And so um, so I just I just asked an, an awful lot of questions. And, went, and now I think that the league is way more – consistent in how they call it I'd be I'd realize okay well this guy I can be as physical as I want he's not gonna call anything unless the ball's in the air and I don't turn you know that kind of stuff right other guys it was a little different so you just had to do your homework and know your opponent and and your opponent is not always just the other team sometimes it's the referees knowing what they're gonna call yeah NFL Hall of Famer Michael Ains with Armin and Levac on 104.5 the team tell us about know your stats uh, well, Know Your Stats is a, a prostate cancer awareness campaign. Um, I'm a prostate cancer survivor. I uh, found out that I had prostate cancer basically by attending a screening in Canton, Ohio, where they launched it. Uh, and um, that at that screening, uh, in talking to a doctor, I realized I didn't know anything about prostate cancer. And he scared me when he said one in six men are going to get the disease, one in five African Americans. So I visualized a, a gym full of, uh, you know, men and figuring if one five of those men or one in six of those men are going to get cancer, I was like crazy. Wow. And so why don't I know more about it? Yep. And when one, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer, so more men are going to get prostate cancer than women are going to get breast cancer. But I've never had one conversation with a man about it, and I know everything there is. To, I shouldn't say everything there is to know, yeah. but I know what a symptom of breast cancer is. I know what a breast is. You know, I know what a breast does. I didn't know what a prostate gland was right. located, what it did, and any symptoms. So this campaign is, uh, and from, well, let me finish, but that, that screening is where I found out that uh, later I had to have a biopsy, but I found out that I had prostate cancer, and I became the, um, the spokesperson for it. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I know we're we're in a rush for time here, but but that campaign has uh, turned out to be something that I'm super passionate about, and I'm super passionate make, making sure that every man knows th that they potentially could get this disease, and you will have it in your system. <laughs> you know, if, if every man already does. Okay. But uh, if it gets out of whack and uh, and you have a a, a big um, a change, a rapid change in your PSA level, then you might have something going on. NFL Hall of Famer Michael Haynes, knowyourstats.org, very important. All right, I got to get a high five from a Super Bowl champion right All right. Here. Good so, high five. So let me ask you guys who you're rooting for this week. Uh, I hope they both lose. Is that possible? <laughs> it's it's hard for me to tell you this, and I think I'm going Seattle because of the defense. Yeah. But I know you're an ex-Patriot. Who do you got? Well, no, it's I always say that it's a team with the best defense that wins, but – me, I always go for the AFC. I don't really care, you know. I'm, okay. I, I'm an AC, AFC guy my whole career, so I always root for the AFC. And I, if I had a way that I could get my message to the AFC team oh boy. to help them win, I would do it, you know. <laughs> KnowYourStats.org, <laughs> Hall of Famer Michael Haynes. Mike, it was a pleasure. This was great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, quick photo. Can you come over? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Real quick. No problem.